Mia Hughes. I am the program manager for bioinformatics.ca, um, and I run the Canadian Bioinformatics Workshop. And I'm here today with Dr. David Wisher to talk a bit about the workshop series, where we came from, and where we're going. Thanks, Mia. Yeah, I'm Dave Wisher. I'm actually one of the founders for the CBW series. It started off in 1999, probably when we were just a little tyke. Uh, so it's been going on for almost 24 years. Um, first workshop was actually held at the University of Calgary on a day not unlike today, uh, at the same time also. Um, CBW was started uh, with uh, Francis Ouellette, uh, Chris Hogue, Christoph Sensen, and myself. But uh, we were supported by Stephen Hurst and uh, the Network Centers of Excellence program. So there was both PENCE and CGDN, or the Canadian Genetic Lead Disease Network and the Protein Engineering Network, Centers of Excellence. Um, so it started off, innocently enough, we thought there would just be one, one shot, one workshop, um, but we had so many people applying, um, and so many people that we actually had to turn down that we figured we should maybe offer another workshop. And again, the thinking was that maybe two would be enough, or maybe we'd do it for at most three years and wind it down. But it was clear we hit, uh, um, uh, I, I guess, a, a soft spot in terms of education where there wasn't enough bioinformatics training. Uh, and so in fact, uh, the workshops continued and grew to the point where it no longer was a single two-week workshop. It was multiple workshops, many of them were housed in, in, um, in Vancouver. And uh, uh, Francis Willette took on the leadership role uh, for um, CBW. And over the years, uh, we continued to work, the, the four of us, uh, continued to offer those workshops. Uh, some people moved on, others retired, um, but the workshops kept on continuing. Um, we had different uh, leaders who were at, actually in, in Mia's position, uh, Michelle Brassens, Ann Myers, um, and now Mia. Um, others before that, and I think Stephen Hurst played a key role for many, many of these uh, early workshops. And here we are, 24 years later, um, almost back to where they started the game. Uh, but with our, our new coordinator, uh, Nia. So now you've been on the job for, I guess, uh, well, three months now? Yeah, just, just past three months. They've decided they're keeping me. <laughs> That's great. So maybe you can tell us a little bit more about the, the workshops that are uh, launching this, this year, and some that you've already given, and some that you're going to be given, and maybe where you're thinking is going to go for the next one. Yeah, so we're offering 10, offering and have offered 10 different workshops um, this season. Uh, we started out with an infectious disease genomic epidemiology workshop online, which was four days long and went really well for 66 people, which is very possibly the largest workshop we've ever given, or so I hear. Um, and then we had a pathway and network analysis workshop, two R workshops to learn to program in R. Um, we've got metabolomics, which is happening right now, as well as microbiome, which is also happening right now. Um, and metabolomics is particularly exciting because we're offering it in two locations simultaneously. So we're here in Edmonton right now, and Dr. Wisher broadcast from here to Montreal on day one. Um, and today is day two, and they're broadcasting back from Montreal. Dr. Uh, Jeff Shaw is uh, presenting today um, on the other half of the metabolomics course. Um, and then later this year, we've got a, one of the classics, the RNA-seq workshop, and then that's being followed up right away by a brand new workshop, um, single cell RNA-seq, which is really exciting. Um, and we're wrapping it up with another one of Dr. Wishart's, which is machine learning, um, and an epigenomics workshop um, in October. Um, and one of the things that I'm really excited about as part of this job um, and where CBW is going is we want to really expand how we offer these workshops and make them more accessible. Um, because as it stands, offering them in one location uh, means people either have to travel in um, or just not attend the workshop at all. And virtual workshops are great, but there's something really special about being in a room with other people learning together. Um, and so the distributed model, which is what we're doing here for metabolomics, is one of the things that we're trialing, seeing if we can have different nodes, different locations across the country, time zones permitting, broadcasting to each other with professors and TAs on site, um, but this sort of collective, multi-location learning experience. That's one of the things we're really excited about. 
Yeah, I think this is a really good point, and one that I think is somewhat successful so far. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, um, and we'll have a mix. We'll have, I think, both virtual workshops and person workshops and these, these hybrid. Um, and, and it is, I think, um, a lesson we've learned through surviving from COVID. So the workshops um, had a bit of a rough spell uh, as we went through COVID. We could no longer do uh, um, in-person workshops, and um, enrollment dropped, people were a little concerned, but it also taught us how to do virtual workshops, and, and that was a, a valuable lesson because it, it, it showed us that it's possible, and in some cases it's the preferred approach given the, the, the group or the availability of the facility. Um, and this hybrid one where we're actually doing a you know, dual location opens the possibility that we could go maybe from two to three to four locations. A challenge with Canada is it's so big, yeah. and traveling from one place to another uh, is is expensive now, and staying in hotels is expensive. And so, if you find that many people are actually coming from one side and another from another side, uh, it can I think reduce costs for everyone, um, and that's why I think we're, we're excited about that opportunity. Um, the machine learning workshop that I'll be offering in August this year will be a virtual workshop. Um, it would be nice someday to do an in-person one, uh, yeah. but I think. Uh, as, as we're still going through some of the, the growing pains of, of uh, CEW 2023, um, we're probably going to refine some of those things over the next little while. Um, so, so, Nina, in terms of your expectations over the coming years, I know this is probably too premature to ask, but where would you like to see CEW going? Would you like to see more workshops? Would you like to see uh, it moving to international? Um, offshore locations? Would you like to see it partnering with other groups? Um, how else can we kind of grow the idea? Um, all of the above. <laughs> I would love to see the um, material expand and us add more workshops, particularly um, I'm from a plant biology background. I studied epigenetics and corn um, during my graduate degree, and so I would love to see um, us fill some of the niche for plant-specific bioinformatic research. Um, I'd love to get things like the Cold Spring Harbor collaboration back on the calendar that was paused because of COVID um, and build some of those uh, institutional connections, those, those partnerships again, like we're doing here with TMIC. Um, and internationally, we, we do have international students at um, most workshops, uh, at least a couple, and it would be great to expand on all of those. You really, uh, you really hit all the points there. <laughs> so those are some of the things I'm really excited about.